Lab. Today on the bench, I've got a SWR 2x10C amplifier. Came in for repair. Point, high distortion. So before I even turned it on, I gave it an inspection. Let me show what I found. As you can see from the rust on the chassis, the amp has uh, seen better days. There's all the chips here installed. Of course, the first thing I do is make sure all these little ICs are seated in those sockets okay going over to the power supply board you see these two caps here they should have these plastic caps on top they don't so they are slightly what we call pregnant and then what really got my attention I'll put the spotlight on it down here if you look way down here at the bottom you'll see a resistor and he's cooked now, I already uh, cleaned some of the soot off of this resistor here, but there are some trails of smoke up on these two. So that resistor down there, that's R8. It's supposed to be a 180 ohm resistor. Right now he measures about 50. So we've got uh, some excessive current that we're going to have to take a look at. Luckily for me, I do have the schematic. So here, it's R8. It looks like R8 goes to Q14, goes through this diode, some caps and other things. So before I turn this thing on, we're gonna go in here and buzz things out, see if we can find something shorted. Unfortunately, as you can see, the board is not accessible from the back at all. So I'm gonna have to remove it. These screws that you see here, those screws hold the final output transistors. So all that's got to come out before I can get this board into a position where I can measure it. So here we go. I'm going to take out these screws and then we'll get the board out and buzz out these parts. See if we can find the culprit. So these guys uh, spared no expense on screws. There's actually like 13 screws holding this board in. Still got one that's hidden up under here, playing games with me. Get that out, and the board should pop out of here. Still fighting me. Hold on a second, we'll get back at it. Okay, the board's loose. That uh, middle screw that was fighting me was actually going through a transistor. So uh, be cautious when you're taking that out. And you can see the insulating pads when it goes back together. We got to make sure to put some more heat sink compound on these so that uh, you get proper heat dissipation. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna inspect this board for bad connections, and then we're gonna buzz out that uh, smoked resistor and see what it goes to. Well, since I'm uh, an old guy, physically, not mentally, I gotta use one of these jobbers, right, to inspect the board. I've already found a few things that I'll show you in a minute, but it's always good to use a nice, magnifying glass, you know, lit type lamp to inspect these boards. This one is made by Luxo and it's a five times magnifier. You can find them all day that are 3.5 or so, but the five really makes a big difference on circuit board inspection. So overall the board looks pretty good. Um, I do see a couple components though that are in question. First one being this capacitor. I'm going to zoom in on this and I'm going to show you why I suspect there's a problem. So here we go. What I want to show you is typically capacitors and other components mounted on the board are fairly rigid. Take this cap, you see he'll kind of move sideways because the leads are going this way and this way. So you can expect it to rock like that. But if I want against leads, it shouldn't rock, right? It should be rigid. Now, look over here at uh, C19, I believe. Same thing, he should rock back and forth, but look, he rocks this way too. Now looked underneath, and the connections look good, okay? But you can't see this, but I could see it with my magnifying glass. Up under here, one of the leads has become unsoldered from the board. And this is normally due to transportation vibration on these amps. They kind of get a rough ride, you know? back in the roadies truck components can shake loose so I'm going to remove this cap 
we're going to take a look at it. So this cap should probably come out pretty easy because I suspect only one lead is actually soldered on the board still. Oh yeah, she's spinning all around the place. It's still fighting me though. There it goes. You see? That lead right there. You can see it. It's busted right off. Sheared due to vibration. So we're going to change this cap out. 35 volt, 1000 microfarad. Let's see what we got. So here's a new cap. This one is a 1000 microfarad at 50 volts. I could not find a 35, but it doesn't matter. It'll do the job. Keep your polarity right. Positive there, negative over there. Seat him in. Then my leads. Grab the old solder gun. Got our cap in place. Get him soldered in. And after that, I'm going to go pull out that fried resistor. And see if we can figure out why that's uh, got a problem. So since uh, R8 is torched, I'll show you the easy way to get him out. Just clip him in two. And then we'll take it out as two pieces. So I just grab these little guys with a pair of long nose. Heat up the connection. And out she comes. So here is our new R8 non-smoke version, 180 ohm. Let's get him soldered in. So we've repaired the obvious. There's our new resistor. You still see a little bit of smoke on the one above him. And of course the cap's been changed. So now we got to find out why did that resistor fry, okay? I don't think it has anything to do with that cap. I think that was just a bonus for us to find. So what we're going to do now is we're going to find R8 here on the schematic. We're going to check this transistor. We're going to check this diode, a couple of these caps, see if we can find anything that's shorted or looks strange. If all checks out well, I'll give her a smoke check. All right, so if you take a look, I've got my meter set on diode check. In this case, we'll use that to verify these transistors are okay. Now, here's a good transistor. You can see one junction and the second junction. So that one's alive, alive and well, all right? Now we're going to go up here. We're going to check Q14, because that's what uh, our smoked resistor was feeding, okay? So same thing, we'll see. Now there's one junction, but look at the other one. Nothing. Nobody home. So I suspect the Q14 is damaged. We're going to pull it out and check. Same deal. Use our solder wick to desolder this transistor. Because we don't want these foil pads damaged. And we also don't want to damage this transistor in the removal process. So always use your solder wick and I'd recommend Chemtronics. So there you go. Transistor is removed, the holes are cleared, and here he is. It's a 2N5416. So D Lab will check stock. See what I got. Now we've got the transistor out of circuit. Let's give it a double check. Back to the diode position. Here's my base. Here's my collector. You can see that junction's alive. That's what we saw in the circuit. Now here is base to emitter wide open. So the problem is is that this little uh, transistor right here the 2N5416 is obsolete. So I either have to replace it with an NTE397 which is a cross or see if I can find some of these old stock say on eBay. Well unfortunately I didn't have that transistor in stock so I had to order it. Um, so due to the length of this video. I'm going to call it quits right now. We'll have a part two and a follow up of the repair of the SWR amp. But at least you got some good troubleshooting tips out of it, I hope. And we'll see you here uh, with another video maybe in a week or two and uh, see how the repair went. So thanks for tuning in.